Hello everyone and welcome to this audio um, uh, this audio um, uh, uh, on uh, in and around uh, an overview um, uh, in context of this research poster that had been put forward um, for the uh, International Pediatric Transplant Transplant Association or IPTA uh, 2023. Uh, this um, works um, uh, is an overview um, in and around transplant neuroimmunobiology, the immune system transplant rejection and neuroendocrinology, and it's a, a sort of a, ret uh, a retrospective. And this works was uh, collaborative between um, between uh, uh, several uh, academic uh, academics and academic institu uh, academic uh, academics and academic institutions. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, here I'm, I'm going to provide. I provide um, uh, uh, a sort of uh, uh, a sort of overview around this um, uh, research, um, providing uh, uh, beginning with um, uh, beginning with uh, sort of uh, the aims around this works. Um, so the aims of, of this works um, are to highlight how specific immunobiological and neuroendocrine markers can reduce uh, chemokine migration um, and uh, and acute acute allograft rejection or AAR and, and in around the mechanisms the pre-transplant phase in, uh, uh, in, in, in context of solid organ transplantation is just as central as the post-transplant duration and it is postulated that Hanselli's general adaptation syndrome 1930s from 1936 uh, and specific um, Neuro and uh, neuroimmunobiology and neuroendocrinology uh, should be considered aligned uh, aligned uh, to transplant uh, to tr uh, aligned to transplant immunobiology in context of allograft uh, allograft uh, prognoses uh, and so in and around the background around this works <clears throat> cytokines uh, so cytokines are, so, uh, are small molecules that, um, uh, sig uh, that signal between cells inducing growth, differentiation, chemotaxis, activation, enhanced, um, uh, enhanced cyto uh, cyto uh, cytotoxicity and or regulation of immunity. Chemokines and cytokines which direct, uh, which direct cell migration and or activate uh, 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 chemokines are cytokines which uh, direct cell migration and or activate cells. Chemokines are closely related to cytokines are produced um, by many cell types in response to uh, to the infection or physical damage. Um, they activate, uh, chemokines activate, um, uh, activate and direct effector cells to sites of tissue damage and regulate leukocyte migration or trafficking into tissues. In context of immunobiology, CC, chem uh, CC chemokines are chemo chemotactic for monocytes, and CXC, uh, CXC chemokines are chemotactic for uh, polymorphonuclear neutrophils, um, uh, or, P uh, or, or referred to or abbreviated as PM, uh, PM, uh, PMNS. Uh, and chemokine receptors are expressed on specific uh, cell populations permitting uh, different chemokines uh, to have uh, selective immunobiological activity. Chemokines are primarily involved in attraction of leukocyte, uh, leukocytes, so for example lymphocytes, monocytes and neutrophils, and they can be released by many different uh, type cell types and serve to guide uh, to guide cells involved in innate immunity and lymphocytes in adaptive immunity. Some chemokines also have role, roles in the development of lymphocytes migration and angio angiogenesis, and where angiogenesis um, is, is, uh, is uh, the growth, uh, growth of new blood vessels. Uh, and it is, um, it is um, uh, evident that cytokine molecules Cytokine molecules are important molecules for activating the um, and directing effect to cell populations to the site of damage, as well as for controlling leukocyte migration into tissues. So to attain long-term uh, long-term transplant uh, prognosis or survival, post-transplantation has been the ultimate has been the ultimate challenge for a variety of organ uh, organ transplant specialties. Immunosuppression or IST reduces the, accident, uh, reduces the activation or efficacy of the immune system. Uh, some, um, portions, some, portion, some portions of the immune system itself 
have immunosuppressive effects on, um, on other parts of the immune system, but clinically induced uh, immunosuppression is uh, carried, uh, carried out through pharmacotherapy. And this is usually done uh, to prevent um, the form, uh, the, form um, uh, uh, the body from uh, rejecting an, an organ transplant um, um, or from the treatment of autoimmune diseases. Um, and so when an organ, uh, organ is uh, transplanted, the immune system of a recipient will recognize it as foreign, uh, as foreign tissue and, and attack it. And so cortisone, uh, cortisone um, was one of the first uh, immunosuppressants, uh, immunosuppressants identified, and the more um, effective as um, and more effective immunosuppression or IST, um, uh, uh, um, uh, which had been which had been has been known has been uh, has been known um, as uh, has been known as uh, uh, azathioprine um, was identified um, uh, in in 1950 in the in, in the late 1950s, specifically 1959. But it was not until the discovery of cyclosporin or cyclosporin A uh, in the 1970s um, uh, that um, transplant surgery found a sufficiently powerful immunosuppressive uh, immunosuppressive agent or uh, IST. Monoclonal antibodies at the same time, or MABs, are antibodies that are identical to the immune system because they are they they are produced by one type of immune cell and all clones of a single parent cell. Monoclonal antibodies, or MA, uh, again MABs, have advanced from involving uh, from involving uh, involving fusion of uh, immortal cell, uh, for example, a myeloma tumor cell with a predetermined antibody producing B cell, and this uh, sort of fusion is done by ensuring cell um, cell um, membranes um, that are more perme uh, more permeable. Uh, in, uh, initially, mouse and mo monoclonal antibodies or MABs did not make ideal uh, ideal ideal therapeutics because differences between human uh, and murine uh, genetics. And this has been dealt by uh, by humanizing murine antibodies or by making um, fully uh, human monoclonal antibodies. And so it is now it has now become um, uh, monoclonal antibody uh, implementation um, has now become a sort of standard uh, alongside uh, mainstay IST. So um, the next part of this um, uh, of, of this uh, sort of uh, uh, this works is is to uh, uh, to help. Uh, to help sort of answer the question, how does neuroimmunobiology and neuroendocrinology associate? So stress, um, stress uh, is a medical term, a sort of a medical term or terminology for a wide range, for a broad range of of, uh, of strong external stimuli, both physiological and psychological, which can cause um, physiological response, um, uh, uh, and which has been referred to. Um, where the, where the, the physiological response or even immunological response um, has been referred to uh, retrospectively as the general general adaptation syndrome first described um, in 1936 by um, by uh, endocrinologist um, Hans Hans Selly in the journal Nature. Um, Selly described the, um, the general adaptation syndrome uh, as having three three particular uh, phases. Um, alarm uh, number one, uh, alarm reaction where the body detects external stimuli. Number two, adaptation where the body interacts defensive countermeasures against the stressor. Uh, and three, exhaustion where physiologically the body uh, the body um, runs out of defenses. Um, and so it would seem acceptable that stage two, um, stage two, um, or adapt, uh, adaptation where the body interacts, interacts defensive, um, uh, interacts defensive countermeasures against the stressor, um, correspond, corresponds to to episodes of acute, um, uh, acute, uh, acute allograft rejection or AAR. Now studies of the immune system and psychology are becoming a direction. Um, which uh, which um, is uh, which which are significant and clinically and clinically important. A change uh, in the amount of natural killer cells or NK cells and and their um, and, and their 
uh, stress-induced activity is an important defense mechanism of um, in context of uh, physiology, and it can um, it can uh, it constitutes constitutes a component a component of the preparation for defense against potential potential pathogen penetration. So, for example, when uh, when people get angry, when 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 individuals get angry, the entire body responds. It 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 instantaneously becomes tense and physiologically physiologically or automatically the body moves in, moves towards fight um, fight or flight and so when con uh, when when content when content then physiologically the entire body becomes content um, and stress hormones can can change the immune cell behavior and the activity of um, of the entire immune system and studies involving or investigations involving transplant immunobiology and neuroendocrinology should be included uh, should be uh, should be included in investigations to better understand acute allograft rejection or AAR uh, and this works um, has has um, has sort of a a summary um, a semi a a, 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 a a, a summary um, uh, sort of uh, illustration uh, highlighting the biology of chemokines and receptors. Um, uh, and so, for example, chemokines are involved in the development of TH, uh, T, helper, T helper cell type 1, T helper cell type 2, angiogenesis, uh, angiostasis, uh, uh, metastases, cell recruitment, in, inflammation, lymphoid, um, lymphoid organ development and, and uh, lymphoid lymphoid uh, traffic uh, trafficking um, and also um, uh, and also wound uh, wound healing um, the work uh, the illustration has been uh, adapted from works um, chemokine uh, uh, chemokine and receptors um, uh, are um, uh, 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 as being um, important in a variety of immunological uh, immunological functions and uh, and the works was the illustration was adapted from uh, works by Rossi and Zlotnik from uh, from uh, from 2000. Um, now, in context of this of this works as well, um, as it leads into into um, providing a basis around the literature um, as a as a as a sort of a retrospective. Uh, so. Um, uh, O'Leary uh, in 1990 highlight that chronic stress has been associated with suppression of the immune uh, suppression of of the immune uh, fun of, of immune function and that there, and there is evidence that the immune system um, may not adapt over time. Um, there's works by Adder, Adder and Cohen in 1993 um, uh, that highlight both conditioning and stressful stimulation exert biologically. Uh, bio, uh, exert biological uh, effects or biologically affects the uh, uh, biologically affects um, that uh, that can alter development uh, and or progression um, of immunologically mediated patho uh, pathophysiological processes. It was worked by Dabar Dabar and team in 95 1995 that informed that significant and selective changes in numbers and percentages are identified in peripheral blood leukocyte during stress in subpopulations of rat models. Um, it was worked by Evans and team in 1995 that examined how stressful events and depression may affect uh, uh, may affect uh, uh, sort of key cellular immunological um, immunological parameters in in subjects uh, with and without a hum human immunodeficiency virus or HIV uh, infection and cytotoxic T. T lymphocyte phenotypes. It was Mills and team in 1996 that examined relationships between um, psychological characteristics and immune responses um, uh, to an acute laboratory stressor, and such distribution may significantly affect the ability of the immune system to respond to a potential or, or, or ongoing immune challenge. It was Shed, uh, Shedlowski, Shedlowski uh, and Schmidt in 1996 um, that discuss uh, discuss stress on uh, and the immune system and acute stressors uh, acute uh, acute stressors and and uh, physical activity have been shown to trans transiently uh, enhance immune responses. These stress effects these stress effects on the immune system seem to be 
uh, seem to be mediated uh, through endocrine factors since hormones, neurotransmitters and neuropeptides can interact with cellular components of, um, of, the, uh, uh, of the immune system. It was Gobel, uh, Gobel uh, Mills uh, in 2000 who examined the effects of acute psychological stress uh, and exhaustive exercise on the expression and density uh, and density um, of uh, of adhesion molecules, uh, for example, L-selecting uh, L-selecting LF uh, LFA type one and ICAM uh, ICAM type one on monocytes uh, on monocytes granulocytes and lymphocytes. It was Segrega and colleagues in 2000. Uh, who highlighted chemokine receptors are present in acute allograft rejection or AAR and correlate correlate with the distribution of T cells. It was work, uh, it was Hancock Hancock and team in 2002 that highlight very very chemokine receptor expression in cardi uh, in cardiac uh, allograft rejection. It was Cockwell and team and Cockwell and team in 2002 who demonstrate, demonstrate the importance and the role of chemokines uh, and chemokine receptors in acute allograft rejection. It was Larson and team in 2001 who informed uh, acute stress um, uh, may signal increase um, in at least some aspects of cell mediated or T, T helper cell type one driven immune response. Immune response. It was Maddox and Pariante uh, and Pariente uh, in 2000 and 2001, who also say that chronic stress um, appears to result in suppression of the immune response, um, whereas uh, whereas immune for activation, uh, 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 immune activation and suppression have been associated with acute stress. It was Sternberg in 2001 who informed that physiological uh, physiological levels of <clears throat> of glucocorticoids. Um, uh, are immunomodulatory rather than immunosuppressive, causing a shift uh, of cytokine production um, from a pre uh, from a preliminary uh, prime uh, from uh, from from primarily uh, pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory uh, pattern. And such patterns of of cytokine production can be categorized as T uh, helper cell type one or T health T uh, helper cell type two, and roughly. Uh, and, and roughly correspond uh, correspond to cellular or humoral humoral uh, immune responses. It was works by Redwine, uh, Redwin and uh, Redwin and uh, colleagues in 2003 who hypothesized that activation of psychological stress um, psycho uh, psychological stress um, response increases uh, autonomic activity and enhances immune function by inducing a significant increase in, in, in numbers of leukocytes at sites of inflammation. It was also Redwin, uh, Red, uh, Redwin, in 2000, uh, Redwin and team in 2003 who further discussed that few, um, few studies, few human, human investigation, in, investigations have examined the effects of stress and leukocyte, on leukocyte, um, leukocyte motility and to and to date there are no published exam no published uh, examining as uh, uh, no published works examining um, uh, psychological stress and leukocyte chemotaxis in that in this context and chemotaxis chemotaxis did not correlate uh, with uh, does, uh, di, uh, uh, chemotaxis did not correlate with uh, catecholamine levels suggesting that another mechanism of activation may also exist uh, which increases chemotaxis after stress and it was worked by Yoon, uh, Yoon and team in 2000 Yun and team in 2004 who demonstrate uh, who, who demonstrate um, who demonstrate uh, le uh, uh, that that uh, demonstrate that uh, chemokine receptors uh, play a significant role play, play significant roles in the development of chronic rejection uh, and may serve as potential therapeutic targets um, for um, uh, therapeutic targets for um, uh, for uh, cardiac uh, allograft vasculopathy um, and it was Zhao uh, Zhao Feng Zhao Feng and team in 2005. And that dem that demonstrate um, that uh, uh, the unique uh, unique role um, of chemokine molecules in the maintenance of cardiac allograft tolerance um, uh, mediated by natural killer T cells um, in in a in a mouse in a mouse model. 
it was um Ulig, um it was Ulig and uh and Carlos and Carlos in 2005 who informed that there are plurality uh, that um that there are plurality or there is plurality um of how neuroendocrino uh, endocrinological factors can affect uh can affect uh, or might influence may influence immunity um immunity and and the immune uh, and immune uh, system mediated disease and this is consistent and there there are consistent and convincing reports of links uh links between stress and disease onset and progression prospectively the perfect model would be would be where patients where patients are are sort of stress are stress free um, um before transplantation um uh, i.e on on uh, uh i.e for example um uh, 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 i.e i'm wearing wherein patients are on forms of replacement therapies and prophylaxis and throughout time awaiting awaiting a transplant this may well um suppress suppress those chemokine receptors that lead to acute allograft rejection episodes post transplant so in context of of of, of uh this uh, sort of over, uh, overview uh, there is a t uh, there is uh, works in this in this overview that highlight chemokines and receptors identified um in human renal uh, renal acute allograft rejection um and again um again um the the uh, uh that uh, again listeners our uh, listeners are welcome uh, are welcome to to access this research post the presentation through um through the renal patient support group the rpsg research gate page which um which um uh which um uh uh, and, uh, and through uh, and which uh, which which and when uh, and once uh, sort of accessing um, the, this uh, sort of uh, this uh, sort of table overview that looks at chemokines and receptors identified in human renal allograft uh, acute allograft rejection and there are uh, there are uh, uh, there are the the list of chemokines the findings are um, the main sort of findings around um, around uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of laboratory laboratory based investigations and then the um the the reference um reference um uh, alongside uh, alongside uh, uh alongside alongside that um as well and so um uh, the works the the um the uh the table can be uh, accessed um um uh, uh from from a paper from a paper that was um um, that's uh, that's referred to as chemokines and receptors identified in human renal uh, um, uh, AAR or acute allograft rejection, and it's um, works that was uh, this table was adapted from works by Instant uh, Instant and Cockwell in uh, in 2002. Um, in context of a sort of prospective investigations, chemotaxis is method is is methodology to investigate transport migration transport or transport or migration towards a concentration gradient of chemo attractive for leukocytes or neutrophils uh, leukocytes so for example neutrophils monocytes and lymphocytes or other migratory cells an upper chamber containing um, a, a suspension of uh, cells is separated by mem uh, by a membrane or from a lower chamber containing a medium with uh, chemo attractant chemo taxes for um, of the of the cells from the upper chamber into a lower chamber occurs occurs um, over a predetermined duration. The cells of the bottom of the bottom chamber may may be counted uh, directly. And so, for example, when using a homogeneous homogeneous population of cells, or maybe uh, maybe uh, or maybe stained uh, for defined um, defined markers when assaying a mixed population of cells and analyzed and analyzed through flow cytometry now in context of using a t-cell culture system in isolation this would be helpful to observe chemotaxis uh, chemotaxis um, uh, as follows so for example to observe chemotaxis for chemokine receptors cellular adhesion molecules and monoclonal antibodies uh, using flow cytometry to, and and to uh, using flow cytometry uh, flow cytometry um, uh, analysis to identify uh, movement of particular cell types 
and measuring stress neuroendocrine levels pre and pro post transplant would be complementary investigations monitoring stress levels in pre transplant duration um, is uh, is and could be of uh, uh, could be of uh, could uh, could be and is is of importance uh, a study uh, with chemotaxis assays um, uh, uh, chemotaxis assays could potentially observe um, catecholamines with repeated stress and this would potentially allow to help identify which hormones influence chemokine receptor uh, receptor migration a study that incorporates chemotaxis and monoclonal antibodies with neuroendocrines post transplant would also be complementary investigations comparing the pre transplant phase and observing chemokine receptor and neuroendocrine uh, with monoclonal antibody therapy uh, uh, would be important and with this uh, with this examining effects of acute stress and exhaustive physical activity on on chemokine receptor migration would be complementary studies with natural killer cell um, killer cell act activity and cortisol with chemokine receptors in pre and post transplant phases could be could also be important conducting investigations that relate acute acute uh, chronic stress um, uh, cyto, uh, cytokine activity and depression may show significant correlations between the immune system and neuroimmunobiology uh, measuring neuroendocrine function with hypothalamic uh, adrenal axis or HPA and, ke uh, and chemokine receptor migration in pre and post transplanted recipients would uh, would be uh, would be important and so in and around uh, the discussion of this works um, uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of ne uh, negative uh, sort of uh, particular uh, states um, uh, particular states so for example anger and frustration are cast as as acute stress and will cause an activate uh, an activated immune response but not an activated immune response but not the same as positive positive stress so for example motivational motivational stress um, positive stress or, or motivational stress and physical activity propagates um, endogenous uh, endogenous beta endorphin increase other endocrine neuroendocrine no neuroendocrine need to need to be better understood uh, Sternberg and uh, works by Sternberg and 2001 informs that for example that glucocorticoid suppress cellular adhesion mi migration uh, cellular adhesion migration macrophage activation and uh, ma uh, macrophage activation antigen presentation uh, T cell receptor expression T T lymphocyte um, uh, uh, activation proliferation differenti differentiation including cytotoxicity and B cell and B cell function including antibody production chemokines closely related to uh, closely related to cytokines uh, so for example known as a sub cytokines are produced by many uh, uh, many cell types in response to infection or damage they are they activate direct cell uh, direct cells to sites of tissue and regulate leukocyte uh, leukocyte uh, migration or movement into tissues to date uh, to date professionals of transplant disciplines observe chemokines and immunosuppression uh, or ist in soul organ in soul organ specialties i.e and so for example a nephrologist with soul based uh, studies and investigations um uh, were soul based in, in studies and, and uh, uh, investigations in and around in, in, in and around uh, in and around uh, 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 in and around uh, renal uh, renal pathophys uh, renal pathophysiology pathophysiology and compare um uh, and and compare to investigations um um of other uh, of other organ specialties previous investigations to understand acute allograft rejection and cytokines are commendable and results have proved proved, uh, proved uh, progressive um, it was instant uh, it, worked, uh, it was instant in 2002 and works by instant in 2002 who hypothesized that there are there there is an alternative pathway that causes acute allograft rejection in patients following anti uh, cd20 uh, cd25 monoclonal antibody therapy uh, 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 cd25 or uh, 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 mono, monoclonal antibody therapy and it was cockwell and team in 2002 to 2003 also hypothesized that in human 
renal transplantation. There are alternative pathways that promote uh, the, uh, the development um, of trafficking phenotype of T cells um, in patients that have received anti-CD25 monoclonal antibody therapy. Cockwell uh, and, team, um, uh, uh, in, uh, and team in 2002-2003 uh, implemented and used a T-cell culture system to analyze the effects of anti-CD25 on the expression of chemokine receptors CXCR3 and other significant chemokine receptors on, on the surface um, of T-cells. Currently, uh, currently, no research no research links neuroimmunobiology and neuroendocrinology in context of transplant immunobiology from a laboratory perspective. And so there is a potential perspective for prospective efforts in these areas, but there would require, uh, uh, but would require, um, require, but would require uh, a, a sort of multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary, re multidisciplinary research efforts to acknowledge scope. And whilst there are complexities uh, with uh, regarding and in regarding transplant allografts in uh, in in uh, regard when regarding uh, what and so whilst there are complexities when regarding prolonging uh, transplant allografts in published efforts surrounding uh, in uh, uh, in in published uh, research um, in published uh, research efforts surrounding. Uh, surrounding the work, uh, this works. So one, one of uh, one of the questions, uh, one one uh, one additional sort of question has been put forward, uh, had been put forward, and and uh, uh, and thus, uh, would it would it not seem sensible to acknowledge that stress can cause a more activated uh, that uh, uh, that stress can cause a more activated immune response, and it is apparent that chronic stress and depression are linked. Um, and uh, cause suppression of the immune system, whereas acute stress can potentially cause a lymphocyte, lymphocyte proliferation and initiate chemokine receptor migration or trafficking to transplanted or uh, transplanted or organ uh, uh, to, tra to transplanted organ and, and sort of instigate an uh, acute allograft rejection episode. However, at the same time, the link between stress a stress and transplant rejection is uncertain. Um, the proposal of using chemotaxis, chemotaxis methodologies, um, uh, me uh, methodologies would be um, an admirable opening point to uh, and linking monoclonal antibodies with chemokine receptor migration and stress and cellular uh, and cellular uh, adhesion molecules to identify how stress could be. Uh, could potentially pro propagate acute allograft rejection, and it would seem sensible to state that uh, stress, uh, stress post transplant pop, uh, uh, that stressed, uh, stressed post transplant population will have an increase in cytokine production, and this could uh, immunolog uh, uh, this could immuno immunologically devastate allograft post transplant period, um, or uh, another pathway. Uh, or, uh, or cause another pathway for acute allograft rejection. In and around the sort of conclusions of this works, uh, 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 around this um, uh, sort of overview, more work is required linking immunosuppression, uh, immunosuppression, monoclonal antibody therapy, and cell surface targets, and uh, neuro, uh, neuroimmunobiology and neuro uh, and neuroendocrinology. The immune system has um, has a suppressed action um, post. Uh, post transplant, uh, i.e., to reduce lymphocyte, uh, leukocyte, uh, leukocyte proliferation, which would normally act against a stressor. So the stressor in this case, um, uh, in context of uh, uh, organ, uh, an organ transplant. Now the aims of this work were to establish and put forward an overview surrounding organ transplantation, neuroimmunobiology, and neuroendocrinology in context of transplant immunobiology from a laboratory perspective. And whilst literature informs that chemokines surrounding transplantation provide a basis, it is uh, it is now anticipated that this work could be used as a guide to prompt procedures for uh, perspective uh, for perspective uh, across um, across uh, uh, pr pr uh, 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 that this work uh, that this work could be um, used as a guide to prompt procedures for for um, pr prospective investigations across but across uh, disciplines or specialties. 
and using a multidisciplinary research effort could should enable professionals to come together to achieve a better understanding of transplant tolerance. Um, based on uh, Selly's work in 1936 and the general adaptation syndrome and, and, stage, uh, and stage two, where the body engages in defensive countermeasures uh, against the stressor, it is proposed that chemokines appear to be integral players in this complex and dynamic process. A combination, um, a combination of neuro, neuroimmunobiology and neuroendocrinology in context of tri transplant immunobiology from a laboratory uh, perspective to understand, uh, to, uh, to understand, um, to understand transplant immunobiology uh, uh, in context of stress, uh, in context of stress, and Selly's work uh, is uh, is important. Uh, again, this uh, uh, research poster uh, poster um, uh, uh, lists um, several uh, sort of uh, references uh, that can be that that can be accessed through uh, that can be accessed online. The full research poster is accessible through the Renal Patient Support Group, the RPSG Research Gate page. Um, and so listeners are more than welcome to access the works uh, through that way. Um, and so this closes um, uh, this um, our audio podcast around this particular overview uh, in, in and around uh, uh, this works. Uh, this works on transplant neuroimmunobiology. The immune system transplant rejection and uh, neuroendocrinology are retrospective uh, where the works was put forward, has been put forward for the International Pediatric Transplantation Association or IPTA 2023. Thank you for taking the time to listen in on this, um, on this overview.